Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday Morning and the Old Cookbook Show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of this book from 1892. It is the Galt Cookbook. Um, it is a church cookbook. It is a community cookbook. It, um, it draws on, on people's recipes from all over southwestern Ontario, um, just west of us here in Toronto. It is considered a pivotal book um, in Canadian cookbook culture and lore. And I, I go back to this book all the time and I look through it. And there's a lot of recipes that I remember from my childhood. Um, things that were very common for us to eat. This one, never heard of it. It's called berry sponges. So I go to berry a couple times a month. Never once ever has anyone offered me a sponge, a berry sponge. I have never heard of this. No clue what they're talking about. Has very few ingredients. There's no flour. There's no egg. Um, I don't understand how it's going to hold together. I don't understand what the texture is going to be like. I guess it's going to be like a sponge, apparently. But all the rest of that, I have no clue. And because there's so little in it, um, I'm actually going to measure the sour cream. I don't often measure sour cream. I usually just take a spoon, plop it in, and say, ah, it's good enough. Kind of looks like what I need. So I'm going to measure calls for half a cup of sour cream. To that, I'm going to add some brown sugar and we'll start stirring that together. Next in, I'm gonna put butter the size of an egg. That's about the size of an egg, I guess, the size of a large egg. Who knows, one of those measurements that is um, terribly imprecise, given that I've measured everything else very precisely. Um, and we'll just get that in there. Now, I was supposed to put in the baking soda already. I've left it out because I have this feeling that, you know, getting this butter mashed in here um, is going to be a little bit more difficult. And I, I, I struggled with the idea of, to me, I would have taken the butter, creamed it a little bit, then creamed in the brown sugar, creamed that all together, and then added the 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 sour cream and the soda. That's not the way it tells you to do it in the recipe. Um, and I wonder if it's just a poorly written recipe. It is a community cookbook. Perhaps uh, Mrs. Martin Todd didn't know how to write a recipe. She just did it. And then when she went to write it down, she didn't write it down in the order that she did it. Who knows? It's one of those things that you, that you learn with these community cookbooks. There isn't always someone testing the recipe to find out if it's written correctly or if it even works. Um, and so you sometimes end up in these quandaries, like I am right now. So let me get this butter mixed in, and we'll see how it works. Okay, why fight with it? It's 2023. I'm going to use a mixer. Okay, so my initial instinct was correct. Um, a well-written recipe well-written recipe gives you the ingredients in the order that they're going to be used. Um, so you can look at the ingredient list and lay out your mise en place based on the order that they're in. That is a well-written recipe, as we now think of well-written recipes. So when I look at this recipe, I look at them in the order that the ingredients are given is the order that they should be used. Completely wrong in this case. I should have um, creamed together the butter and the sugar as I thought I should, then add the sour cream and then add the rest of the, re the ingredients. The next thing is there's no way, even after I add the sour cream, the currants and the pinch of spice, it doesn't tell you what spice to use. I'm going to use cinnamon because I like cinnamon. Um, there's no way that I'm going to be able to spoon drop this very liquidy um, batter onto a tin and bake it. Absolutely no way. I look into the next recipe on this page, written by a, a, different, a different person completely, and it's called sugar cookies. And it's two and a half cupfuls of sugar, one cupful of butter, three eggs, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, flour, flavor, and roll very thin. Again, sparse with the instructions and sparse with the ingredient list. It just says flour. It's kind of a throwaway thing. Oh yeah, put in some flour doesn't tell you how much you're supposed to know. I'm looking at this and saying, I need to put flour in that. 
Um, there's no way this is going to work without the flour. How much flour? Okay, let's give this a go with some flour. Okay, so it is, it is very obvious to me that this is not going to work without flour. Um, not going to work without flour at all. So I am going to add some flour. I've got two cups of flour. Uh, I probably won't use all of it. I think I'll probably end up using maybe about a cup. And that's using all of my cooking and baking knowledge to, to tell me that. I'm not going to mix in the soda into the flour because I don't know how much flour I'm going to use. So I'll mix in most of the flour until I kind of get a dough that I think might be the right consistency. And then I'll put in the soda. Actually, um... A couple of tablespoons of flour <laughs> looks pretty good. I might only put in a half a cup. Okay, a couple more spoonfuls, and let's see how this sets up. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, here we go. Let's put in baking soda. Got that in now. pinch of spice. In this case, it's going to be cinnamon. And for good measure, I'll throw in the currants at the same time. Mix that up. Okay, so I'm going to say I use somewhere between half and three quarters of a cup of flour. And I got a consistency that is pretty good, I think. Um, I'm just guessing. I mean, I've never made these before. So I am completely 100% just guessing. Now, in the vein of not giving you any information to make this uh, to make this recipe, drop on a buttered tin and bake in a hot oven. So I've got the oven 425. That's a hot oven. I don't know how long I'm going to bake them. Um, I'm not going to use a buttered tin. In this case, I'm going to use a piece of parchment paper. Um, and it's a piece of parchment paper that I've already used once for, for baking cookies. I'm going to drop these on. And just guessing, 12 to 15 minutes in the oven, maybe. Okay, I think I can get maybe a couple more on here. Let's see. Don't know how much these are going to spread. Let's get them in the oven. We'll find out. 12 to 15 minutes from now, we will find out. Oh, that tastes really good. That was super sweet. Super sweet, but I think the cinnamon was the right choice. Okay, 15 minutes in the oven. Hey, hey friend. Hey, friends, I caught you reading your cookbooks again. Uh, so, this is the Galt cookbook. Oh, Galt. Yes. Um, and every time I open it, I laugh. Because there's this, this ad. On Howell's the, Baking Powder? On the front cover. Harry Howell. Yes. That's funny. I... <laughs> yes, because Harry Powell is my great, great, great grandfather. So anyway, there's a picture of Harry. And underneath it, it says, this is not the author of this book. But <laughs> Harry B. Howell, mac manufacturer of Howell's Baking Powder which gives excellent satisfaction when used with any good recipe by those who understand baking and only needs a fair trial to make it become a standard in your household. Like our drugs, it is first quality and cheap, only 30 cents a pound. So this I, is- I guess, oh, Harry Howell's drugstore. Yes. And so, so this is at the beginning of the, of the baking powder and baking soda wars. As, and as and they, as the local druggist, would buy the parts and assemble- And, and assemble it in themselves, yeah. So, uh, Ooh, we're- hot slaw. Where is this recipe? Anyway, the recipe's in here. It's from this book. <laughs> it's called Berry Sponges. Okay. It's in the town, not the not the okay, fruit. Okay, I thought you meant the fruit. I'm no. like, okay, it soaks no. up berries? The town, not the fruit. I wonder why they're called sponges. Is, is there egg in it? Like, is it it's made the, with, I, like, a okay, meringue? Or, like, what makes it a sponge? Uh, let me find that recipe, because... I'll just hold on to my cookie. Icing cakes. Cookies. That's closer. 
There we go. Oh, there you go. Fairy sponges, Mrs. Martin Todd. I love recipes that are just written in a paragraph. Except this one was woefully inadequate. Oh, are you saying we actually be, I will be disappointed? No, I'm, I'm, I think when I took them out of the oven, I thought, wow, I have, these are going to be amazing. I just need half. They're very spongy. Mm -hmm. I see why they're called sponge now. Mm. They're super soft. Brown, yeah. brown sugar's amazing in this. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was going to say, they've actually got a little, not actually, because you didn't really sell them very well. Okay, so. They're very sweet. They're like sugar cookie. They are. Mm -hmm. But they're not crisp. Mm -hmm. If you're a fan of crisp chocolate chip cookies, this is not that kind of cookie. Now, there's no flour mentioned in the recipe whatsoever. Oh. So I had to make a decision, two thirds of the way through the recipe, looking at it and saying, that's never gonna amount to anything. And so I put in, I think about three quarters of a cup of flour. And I'm glad I did, cause that is amazing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm glad you took half of it, cause I would have had the whole thing. <laughs> and it just says, pinch of spice. It can be any kind of spice. You can put any kind of spice in there. But something that... A warming spice, though. Something that goes with that sweet brown that sugar. That sweet brown sugar, yeah. Okay, so berry sponges. Definitely a winner. Make sure you add the flour. <laughs> and don't freak out when you open up a cookbook and you think, wow, this isn't right. You're probably correct, correct in your intuition that there's something missing. And just go with it. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't freak out. Just add a little something in there to make it work. Because it's, it's a huge endeavor to put together a cookbook like this with yes. all of these recipes and all of these recipes coming from different sources, written in different voices, written in different ways. There's no way to make sure that they're all right. No, and of course, people made all sorts of assumptions. Yes. At a time when everybody cooked, like you just made an assumption. Mrs. Martin Todd assumed you knew that you had, had to put flour. flour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're making cookies, come on. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. Yeah, sorry, Harry Powell was probably not something we wanted to reference. Uh, people, it's all, it's out there. Everybody knows. Okay. I referenced it in, in a video. And... Oh, the Light Brigade. Yeah, and... Everybody found copies? People are like, you mean they wrote... Oh, Iron Maiden wrote a song about your great-great-grandfather? I guess so. Yep. <laughs>